Hi everybody, I'm Jack the Rambling Rack Intern. I hope that you're doing well. I hope your week is going well. As an unreliable narrator, I missed Tag Tuesday yesterday, but never fear. I do have a book tag ready for today. Uh, my great friend Alan from Big Hard Books and Classics created the Faulkner in August 21 tag. It is weird. It's non-linear, just like Faulkner's novels. It's, you know, the prompts are all mixed up. So let's go get lost together. Prompt three, Yaknapotifa County. What county do you live in and what does its name mean? Well, Yaknapotifa County is famously the county Faulkner creates that has... All, you know, all his major works are set there. Uh, I live in Maricopa County. It is in the state of Arizona in the southwestern United States. There is a uh, Maricopa tribe of indigenous people still extant. They primarily reside in the uh, Gila River community and the Salt River Pima Maricopa community. Uh, the Maricopa and Pima for generations had a very uh, stable alliance uh, against some other tribes and um, that, that were more aggressive. The Maricopa emigrated here from the Colorado River, where they were sort of part of the Yuma tribe originally, which will be relevant on a later prompt. Uh, hint, hint. <laughs> Foreshadowing like Faulkner. Um, and they, they originally, uh, though, the Maricopa referred to themselves as the Piapash tribe. So, prompt one, Benji in The Sound and the Fury is the ultimate unreliable narrator. Name another. Well, I want to begin by saying that. If you, if once you've read The Sand of Fury once and you go back and reread it a second time, Benji is the ultimate reliable narrator. Uh, he lacks ulterior motives, and therefore he is, he is the one who is the most reliable narrator, not accepting Dilsey. So, uh, but I do have a couple I want to point out. One would be our perception of Socrates from Plato. Plato is sort of the narrator of these dialogues that he's creating as a writer. And by the middle dialogues, which should include Theotetus and certainly the later dialogues, Socrates is, at, I, I think, often sort of just the mouthpiece for Plato, not Socrates himself. But in terms of a novel, possibly my favorite, um, unreliable narrators are great in crime fiction or sort of like psychological fiction. An Instance of the Finger Post by Ian Pierce is fantastic. It's a great historical mystery set during uh, the English Restoration, so it's 17th century. And it has multiple unreliable narrators. It's a whole cauldron of unreliable narrators. And ultimately, the, their unreliability is peeled back in the final section, but it's a marvelous book to read. A great, excuse me, great historical uh, mystery, a great historical fiction novel. One I highly recommend if you, if you are interested in any of those types of things. But the single unreliable narrator who I think might be most frequently read, it's the kid who narrates The Cat in the Hat. And I'm going to tell you why. He ends this book in which... This fantastic cat has shown up, the fish is talking, these two Thing 1 and Thing 2 creatures are running around, the cat has all sorts of technologies that don't exist at the time this book was written. This kid ends the book by telling us, and he doesn't even tell us, that's how unreliable he is, he doesn't even tell us. He implies that he is going to lie to his mother, and he's going to wrap his sister up, his sister Sally's going to get wrapped up in this kid's lie. So if he's going to lie to his mother and make his sister complicit in that lie, I don't believe a word out of his mouth. Prompt four, as I lay dying. Tell us about a book that draws upon death or bereavement. Well, besides the New Testament, which uh, <laughs> draws on much more, it's the life and the resurrection after the death and dying. But uh, this is a book, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody else on BookTube uh, mentioning this book. Um, if I have, please let me know. Uh, but Samskara, uh, Write for a Dead Man, and this is a beautiful short novel uh, that, of course, you know, is using the death of, of a man who has, is, is in a certain, certain way, a sense, an apostate um, in India. And the, uh, that death and the, leads to these questions around, you know, can we use our cultural, like, traditions and follow those and bury this, this man the way we would? Or do his actions and his words, um, you know, what would prevent us from being able to do that? Has, has he, like, crossed that threshold? Um, and so the ways that it uses that event, that death, to ask these questions, but also to unfold the past, and also to uh, do it with, with a sense of energy, a sense of humor. <laughs> um, it's, it's an excellent book. Uh, it's by U.R. Anantamurthy. Um, I apologize if, is, if I mispronounced that, but this is a really good book. I might uh, reread this actually, um, and if anybody else would like to know, uh, join me, let me know, because this is a really good book, and one that I would hope would get to an, a wider audience. Um, prompt 2, The Sound and the Fury, Jason Ford is the ultimate unlikable character, and I do agree with that one. 
I can't stand that guy. <laughs> I might dislike that character more than Brian at Bookish dislikes that character, which is saying something. Name another unlikable character. Well, there are plenty. Uh, there's loads of them. Uh, King Henri Christophe in Alejo Carpentier's Magnificent The Kingdom of This World is, of course, one. Uh, he's terrifying and horrifying. Um, that combination of terror and horror is kind of what Sanctuary by Faulkner tries to uh, recreate. But I would add in Wickham from Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. Got a little Jane Austen July going on here. And Wicca, Wick, part of what makes Wickham so sinister is that that type of guy still exists and is running around and is way too common. Um, and so that's part of what's so scary and unlike about him. But if you took all the bad qualities from Jane Austen books and those villains, and you took all the bad qualities from the guys in Trollope's novels or Thackeray's or George Eliot's books, you combined them into one person and then made him a hero, you'd have Flashman. And George MacDonald Fraser in any of the Flashman novels, Flashman in The Great Game might be the best. Um, in any of the Flashman novels, he's very clear about what a reprobate, uh, what a truly like vile individual Flashman is. And he tries to make us root for a guy who's a self-avowed coward and just the worst. Um, ev everything that you could, you could sort of tag up about what makes a person bad. Flashman has that like and just filled with it so uh prompt six light in august name a book that made you feel furious or describes that intensity alan kind of stole my thunder with the great response of native son by richard wright which we read together last year uh but i've got two i want to mention one would be wide sargasso sea by gene reese um i know a lot of people who don't like this book uh i like this book and i like charlotte bronte's jane eyre um and this book is kind of a response to jane eyre and uh this as this book unfolds, as we see what's happening to our, our main character and we realize who she is and, and what her future holds, um, there, there, it, it has a lyrical intensity that I think is very rare in books. But a book that was written, I want to say 40 years after Native Son, I think it was published in 1980, and that uh, takes so many of those ideas, so many of those themes, and shows them in a different setting that is just as relevant, would be Devil on the Cross by Nugugi. And this is set in Kenya. Uh, it was originally written in an uh, indigenous African language and then translated into English by uh, the author Nagui. And uh, this book has so many of those, those similar themes. There's questions around um, prison systems, around uh, political repression, economic repression, uh, relationships between men and women, and how, how the, the intensity of oppression can lead to you know, individuals oppressing each other. And, and examining that um, with just at, at a white hot pitch. This is one of the few books that feels more intense than Native Son. Um, and again, this is one I don't know that too many, I've seen too many people mention, so great, great book. Any of Nagugi's novels are excellent, but uh, Devil on the Cross might be, might be the one that's like single most furious. Prompt 4A, Absalom was a son of David who rebelled against his father. Name a rebellious biblical character. David himself, and I'm not talking about the political rebellion against Saul, uh, his rebellions against like humanity <laughs> and, um, and, and goodness, uh, particularly with the Bathsheba case, but also as a terrible father to Absalom and Amnon, Absalom's older brother, who's worse than Absalom, and Adonijah, who's sort of like a failed version of Absalom. He's a third-rate Absalom. Uh, David is, is, is a terrible husband, a terrible father, a terrible king in a lot of ways. Um, and he's also someone who tries to find contrition. He tries to find um, redemption and forgiveness. And so uh, he's, he's one that I think is, is critical. Prompt five, what is your favorite Faulkner novel and why? So um, Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy is just an incredible book. Um, there's a whole scene set in this book uh, dealing with the Yuma tribe on the Colorado River. And I had mentioned that, you know, some foreshadowing that this would be relevant. Uh, wait, this is by Cormac, I'm sorry. I misread Alan's prompt. I said I was an unreliable narrator. I thought Alan wrote, what is your favorite novel by someone who wished they were William Faulkner and why? My apologies, this is not by William Faulkner. Um, the Sound and the Fury by William Faulkner is my favorite novel. Uh, although, Go Down Moses is right up there, um, and Absalom, Absalom would be right up there, sort of as like a, a third place, but 
Uh, the Sound of the Fury, it's, it's one I love. It's one my wife and I have read together more than once. And it's a book that uh, just fascinates at every turn and horrifies it most of those turns as well. Prompt seven, extra credit. What was Faulkner's nanny's name and why is this significant? Carolyn Barr, also known as Carrie or Aunt Callie. Uh, she is kind of, um, she was black and she's kind of the model for uh, Dilsey in The Sound and the Fury. But you notice that the name Carolyn is the name of the mother of the Compson children, Carolyn Bascom Compson in The Sound and the Fury. And I think that also is relevant. Uh, in terms of who I'm tagging for this, I'm going to tag Tom from LA Books. I'm going to tag Very Literary Carrie because I'm fairly certain she's read The Sound and the Fury. Uh, I'm going to tag Duncan, tag Duncan McCurdy because he's an expert on unreliable narrators as a reader of crime fiction. And I'm going to tag Freddy, it's sluggish reader. So, thus ends The Sound and the Fury. <laughs> Have a great week, everybody.